this is my favorite page on module zero and I would like you to read through it. I have outlined expectations of you as a student. And so um, sometimes we just as people get frustrated when we have certain unsaid expectations of someone else and they don't live up to those expectations. And so an example is every time my father comes to my house and he opens my back door, he slams it when he shuts it and it drives me insane. But I never said to him, please don't slam the back door. I just assumed it was, you know, common human nature that somebody would think, well, if I slam the door and the whole house shakes, I probably shouldn't slam the door. But until I said something to him, he didn't even realize he was slamming the door. So with that being said, um, I have outlined expectations I have for you as a student. Please read through them. I'm not going to read all of them, but a couple are. I expect you to log into the class at least three times per week, more if you need to to get your coursework done. I expect you to log in on Mondays, preferably no later than 12 p.m. to read my Monday morning announcement. Every Monday morning at 8 o'clock or earlier, sometimes the day before, I will send out an announcement that says, hey, this is what we're working on this week. These are some key things to pay attention to. These are the due dates, etc." And I want you reading that because I'm not just saying this week we're working on Module 6, have at it. I'm going to give you some insights into what is important about Module 6 and what are the harder topics to understand in, in Module 6. And I'm going to try to make sure that if you're having trouble, I gave you additional resources. So make sure that you're reading those announcements. You can read through the rest of them. But what I've also done is I have... I've basically balanced out my expectations. If I have expectations for you, you should have expectations for me. So I've set the following expectations for myself. I will also log into the course at least three times per week. I log in like 45,000 times a day. That's not a problem, but I will make sure that I'm logging in at least three times per week. And I will try to make sure that I am doing grading on each of those days. Um, I will compose and send that personalized announcement every Monday morning. Sometimes it will be Tuesday morning if Monday's a holiday. I will respond to your messages sent in Canvas within 24 hours on Monday through Friday. That's important um, to clarify. So when I say that I'll respond back to messages within 24 hours, first I'm going to try to respond as fast as possible, but I'm going to make sure that I do it within 24 hours. Every once in a while, maybe I'll be a little bit longer than that. If you don't hear back from me in 24 hours, send the message again. It means I didn't see it. However, um, I only work Monday through Friday. Um, I used to have all the course due dates set on Friday, but a student pointed out to me that they would like to work on Saturday, and that's fine with me, so I pushed all the due dates back to be on Saturday, so you have an extra day. But I'm not going to be logged in at 11 o'clock on Saturday night if something goes wrong and you have questions. And so if you email me at 8 o'clock on Friday, to me, 24-hour turnaround time on that, since I don't work on Saturday or Sunday, means I'll reply back by 8 o'clock on Monday. So just keep that in mind. Um, try to get your coursework done on Monday through Thursday so that if you have to send me an email, I can reply back on Friday and you have the answer that you need, even if you end up working on Saturday. Please read through all the rest of the expectations. And then if you're interested, if you think of anything to add, I have this little blurb at the top that says, do you have any recommended expectations I should add to either list? So if you want to add something to how you want to set expectations for me as an instructor, I can add that as well. Or maybe you have some additional student expectations. The only thing I ask is try to balance it out. I try to make sure that for every student expectation I add, I add an instructor one. Okay, there are a couple more um, pages that you need to read through in Module 0. I'm not going to click on them. I'm just going to tell you what they are. There's a link to the course syllabus, so if you haven't already read the syllabus, you're being told to read it in the required activities. There is a course materials, text, and software page, which I lied. I do need to show you that. And that outlines what you need to be successful in the class regarding course materials, text, and software. And then there's a semester schedule at a glance, which we already talked about. And there's a video. So this last link is what is Adobe InDesign. I just want you to watch the video to get a better idea of what InDesign is. You do not have to try to do the things that are included in the video or anything like that. Just watch it and kind of say, oh, that's what InDesign is. Because most students who take this class have never used InDesign before, or they've opened it, and they're like, I don't even know what InDesign does. You can just make shapes in here. But it's so much more than that. So before I end this video, I do want to show you the course materials, text, and software. We are going to use InDesign every single day of the semester. We will also use Photoshop starting with Module 6, I think it is, between Module 6 and the end of the semester. So you need access to Photoshop as well. 
You will have optional access to Illustrator, so I'll talk about it, but you don't have to use Illustrator if you don't need it. There is no required text for this class because this is an open educational resources course, and so if you choose the free options, the course should be free to you. If you need access to the Adobe software, you can use SLCC All Access, which, which can be used from any SLCC computer or device. So if you live next to the Jordan campus or to the West Point campus or the West Valley campus and you need to use the software, you do not have to drive all the way to Redwood or to South City campus. If you can find a computer lab on any campus, Miller campus, Meadowbrook campus, etc., uh, Library Square campus, I'm probably missing a campus, uh, you could just go in and use it as a student and you have access to SLCC All Access. In addition, if you are at the South City campus, there is a open computer lab in room 1-180 that's for art students. It has both Macs and PCs and it has all the software that you will need for any art class installed and you can go and use that. The hours vary by semester, so you need to visit it once and write down the hours and then you'll know what the hours are for each semester. In addition, so this is a little bit about the OER initiative at the bottom, in addition, uh, you will have to pay for printing in our class and so you can print it doesn't have to be fancy printing but you'll have to print if you do not want to pay for printing you get three or four dollars of free printing on your one card as a student every semester so the first four dollars is free and then you can also print in 1-173 which is the classroom that I Jessica teach in and if I'm on campus or if there's a lab aid in one room 1-177 you can show them your student ID, they'll have a list of all the students taking Art 1200, and then you can print for free in our labs. You're going to have to output color separations, which do not print on all printers. It's so much easier to come to campus and print because all the screenshots, all the demos, are going to be based on our printers with our print dialog boxes, and you literally can print it and follow along step by step.